All right, Haiku back for the green part of my Lord of the Rings set review for specifically for its impact on Historic Popper. So we'll keep moving through our commons here. Um, this one, uh, again, even though we have the ability to have one legendary, this is not a playable card. If it gave Trample, um, that would be interesting because then you wouldn't have to have legendaries and it would still get a little bit of an effect. Um, but yeah, not, not playable. Bombadil Song. Um, I think there's enough cards that are that um, um, better than this card that you don't want to play this. So there's the, at two mana, you have one that gives a plus one, plus one counter. It's not till just till end of current turn. And it gets Hetz Proof and you get Trample and Reach. So you can use it as a defensive trick or offensive trick. Um and then at one mana you have Snakeskin Veil, which is 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 the most efficient and, and a very good card. So um, I don't think this card is good enough. The fact that you can have this in your hand and not be able to use the Ring Temptation until your opponent walks into your your um, your protection spell with their removal spell means that it's it's just not not where you want to be. Like you can't even force it by if it if it had indestructible as well, you can attack into a bad blocking situation and then use the indestructible part to keep your creature alive and using the ring temptation on on your creature, but yeah, just not good enough, unfortunately. Uh Brandywine Farmer gives you a lot of food tokens. Again, maybe okay with the cat cat um the returning cat um <laughs> Uh, decks, but um, I think this one costs a little bit too much and doesn't give you quite enough. It's interesting that it's not when it dies, it's when it leaves the battlefield. So if you bounce this, uh, like with, or the, actually the better thing we would do is to blink it, then you then you just get like a ton of food tokens. Every time you blink it, you get two tokens. So that's interesting, um, but I don't think there's enough to do with the food tokens yet. Chance Met Elves. Um, this one, again, that they're now putting in this thing where it only triggers once a turn, which is unfortunate. Um, and so it can trigger on your turn and then your opponent's turn. So it can grow a little bit. And like I said, and the other one that grew with Scrying, um, although that one didn't get a counter, um, there's a lot of cards that Scry every turn now um, that give you value. So uh, this card can grow pretty big. Um, and so I think this is actually a pretty interesting card to build around. Um, one nice thing is that uh, it's in green. Uh, so green uh, has ability to dig for certain creatures. So if you're going to build your deck, unfortunately, there's not a lot of cards like this that grow. Uh, so if you build your deck with a lot of scrying, other, other cards that scry to, to specifically pump this up, then you want a, a way to find this which green can do pretty well and then protect this which green does great um that's why bob no song is not playable because there's much better cards to make it uh much much more uh or that are much better than bob no song so you can protect it um and you also can ramp to it so i think this card is actually going to be pretty strong um so um this is a call out for for one of the one of the stronger green cards all right, Elven Farsight, a pretty strong uh, uh, mana filtering. I like how they're adding uh, in these effects in the other colors other than blue. Um, and so uh, the fact that you can scry three and um, draw a card in green is pretty cool. Uh, it's not like broken or anything. Uh, green really cares about its mana efficiency. So having one mana to filter is not uh, the best in some, most of those decks, but um, I could see this kind of allowing for much more green archetypes where you're playing a more mid rangey like uh, style where you're not so interested in the mana efficiency of your cards and uh, paying one mana to filter a little bit would be worth it. Um, especially if you have some really spiky or not really uh, like the power level of your cards is not very even or they do specific things so like using these two together in the same deck um 
first of all, because it also scries, but but the big thing is the fact that you can dig for the, the, the namesake card that you're trying to get for your deck. So a pretty strong card. Next card, Enrage Huron. Uh, uh, a little bit too much for not enough of a enter ETB um, ability. Uh, again, at four at, at, at five mana, I would get a four four and draw a card. And I think drawing a card is probably better than the ring tempting you. Um, Ends Fury is actually a pretty interesting removal spell. Um, I would a couple of people have likened it to um, Savage Swipe, where you get a buff and then you fight. Um, but this one, the it stays on the creature, and you don't have the restriction of only having two power creatures that it works with. Um, now the restriction is power four or greater, which is you can make a, a reasonable green deck um, looking for power four or greater cards. And there's a, actually a couple other cards. The, I think it's the the Wrangler, the I forget what it's called, the something Wrangler um, gets benefit when a power four card get comes into play. So you can make a power four power four or greater uh, theme deck with this card. And it's it's pretty strong. So I think making that deck um, and those decks constraints is actually um, not not like a hindrance. Like you always have to worry if you warp your deck too much. Like warping your deck to have a bunch of scrying effects is not is not going to hurt you um, very much, um, especially when you're playing very strong scry cards like this one. Um, so same with this warping your deck to play creatures with power four or greater um, is not a very big cost. Like you can just play all your little elves to ramp into your bigger three and four mana, four power creatures, and then use Ends Fury to really um, put the hurt on the opponent's creatures. So another strong card. So so green is off to a great start. Um, Galadrium Bow, um, this unfortunately is a little bit too expensive. Um, it does a little bit. Um, you know, to, to untap, but we get this effect cheaper. Um, and um, even though it's not a permanent effect in the instant, it does uh, add a reach token. So uh, I think just the cheap uh, cheaper card is what you're going to want for this type of trick. Where, n make no mistake, it's the first turn it comes in, it's a trick, and then it gives you a little value later in the game. Um, this is not playable. Uh, generous Ent, uh, Forest Cycling is cool. It's interesting that Forest Cycling, the 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 Eldrain uh, Forest card, specifically Gingerbread Cabin, gives you another uh, another food token, and this makes a food token. So you could potentially put this in a food token based deck, um, where if you played it, you would get a food token. But if you cycled it and found your Gingerbread Cabin, then you could also get a food token. So either way, you get a food token. So again, the only payoff card is the Witch's Cat. Um, so there's there's not enough kind of food token payoffs, I don't think, to make a green black food deck. But um, maybe you know, I might I might actually want to try to make one uh, a green black food deck. So another interesting card in green. So even though it doesn't, green doesn't have spike up as as high as blue. It definitely has more, much more interesting cards than any of the other colors. Um, uh, not really a playable card. Um, scrying every turn is kind of cool. It does trigger that other card and gives it plus one plus one counter. But I don't think you want to play this card in that kind of deck. Um, it just attacks for too little. Um, Another food matters deck, and it can fix your lands, but I don't think you want to play this. This costs a little too much for just getting a food, um, so I don't think you want to play that. Uh, Merkwood Spider, um, a one one with Death Touch is pretty cool. Um, the fact that um, you can give your Ring Bearer Death Touch is a little bit interesting. Um, so. Again, a sort of like aggro-y green deck where you play this and also give unblockability to some of your creatures would be interesting. This one is a pretty efficient 3-mana uh, 4-2 uh, uh, with a little ability when it dies. I don't think this is quite playable. I think you much rather play the 3-mana 2-2s two that, that draw you a card or do other things. Um, but... We just saw there was a couple stuff that matters about four four power, so 
it might see a deck. It's it's a um, out of I think there's no four power creatures at two mana, so you have to go to four mana, uh, go to three mana to get to a four power creature. And then I don't think most of them have any abilities. Most of them are vanilla, or they might have like reach or some random ability, and where this one actually has an ability. So that might make it playable in itself. The fact that it, its stat line has default of four power. Um. So yeah, so I think I've, I've talked myself into saying that this one is fine. And if there's a food deck, I've talked myself into saying that many par partings is also a fine card. Um, paying one mana to fix your lands, but then also put a food token that you're going to use in your deck is probably a pretty reasonable card. Um, this one um, I like because it's put a plus one, plus one counter. Um, it, it, if it would only got plus two, plus two, but it was till end of turn or something... Um, it wouldn't be that good. The fact that you only can a activate it uh, as a sorcery is fine. Uh, the big the big benefit of this one is there's no limit to how many times you can activate it. So you can just sacrifice all of your um, uh, all of your random foods that you built up in the game as soon as you land it and grow it out of range of the opponent if the opponent's tapped out. And again, in green, you can protect it too. So I I actually really like this card. Um, this card, I don't think this is what you want to be doing with your food. Giving a slight bonus uh, when you could just be playing Giant Growth for plus three, plus three, it, I think is just much more consistent. So I don't think you want this. We don't have any Infect cards. That's where getting slightly better stat line bonus it makes a really big difference. Um, so with uh, the, the creatures with Toxic rather than um, Infect, Toxic doesn't benefit from, from the stat boost. So... Um, not playable. Uh, retrieve the Shire. Revive the Shire. <laughs> Retreat. Yeah, I'm thinking Retrieval. Um, so it gets back a um, permanent card. So this is kind of interesting. I was thinking of putting kind of similar cards into the um, the dungeon deck that um, that you saw me playing for the Historic Popper um, Midweek Magic. Um, I think the three mana, uh, mill three cards and bring two, bring a, bring a permanent and a Creature back is is a is going to be a better card than this, but it makes a food token, so it's kind of interesting. Um, you know, again, the incidental like for that kind of toolbox type deck, incidental life gain with random card that can also bring back your namesake card that the deck is based on is kind of interesting. Um, so, so this is a possibility. I think it might be outshined by other cards, but I I could be really wrong. Um, if we enter a meta where the food tokens really matter more and gain, having the ability to gain three life, especially main deck, um, uh, might make this card better than that other card. All right, Shower of Arrows, they keep making this card better and better. So it, so it's a three mana, so it's pretty cheap. It's instant, and you also now get the Scry one. So this is the best one at three mana that we have, but at Historic Popper, we have um, Line Up the Shot, which is you can cycle or it can destroy Artifact Enchantment or Creature of Flying for three mana. And it adds to Storm to the decks that find that relevant. So uh, unfortunately, I don't think this is playable. Um, but just just not playable. Very very flexible card. And then uh, Woe's Pathfinder, um, another typical kind of um, elf card. But um, at two mana, you don't want to play these kind of cards, especially at two mana and only one toughness. You're already so weak to wrath. So a lot of really good, um, interesting cards and uh, archetypes. Um, so let me just pick out some of them. So revive the Shire. Uh, is a reasonable card. Mushroom Watch Dogs, um, Mirror Mirror Guardian, Mirkwood Spider. So I'm just trying to order them in my head right now. Many Pardings, Generous Ent. Ent's Fury. Elven Farsight and okay, Chancemen Elves. Okay, so I think how I'm going to order it is Chancemen Elf as number one, Elven Farsight number two. Mm, you know what? I'm going to flip that. I'm going to say Elven Farsight number one, Chancemen Elves number two. Uh, the reason why is 
we only have one of this type of effect so far. And I think um, to build the deck around this is going to be a little bit tough. Um, so um, I think putting it number two, I think it's a very strong card, but it's tough to build a deck only around a single card because then you only have four copies that you're trying to find. So one, two, then the pure bloods as, as three. Uh, the dogs, where's the dogs? Watch dogs, not pure bloods. Um, as uh, number three. And then um, revive the Shire as number four. And then and then it's the 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 food stuff. So many partings and the Brandywine farmer kind of compete for that last spot. Um, Ence Fury and the four four power creature. Those I think are kind of at C. So I think food is going to probably be better. So I think those are four and five. And then f actually, I'll probably put this one at four. Then the two food cards at five and six. And then this four power card at, at seven. I forgot about ranking the Mirkwood Spider. Um... Anyway, it's thrown in there. So there's a lot of uh, reasonable cards in green um, that are uh, that are playable and kind of interesting cards that could make a deck. Um, Transmiss Elves can make a unique deck. Um, Ence Fury can make a four po uh, four power deck, and um, the food deck can be made by these Watchdogs and um, which is which is Cat or whatever the cat is called. Um, so. It'd be interesting um, to see which one of those archetypes actually has enough support to make a full deck. Um, yeah, um, so that was green. So I'm going to be probably building a lot of those green decks to see if there's enough support or enough ways to find the Chance Menace Elves. Like what's nice about Historic Popper is you can play Faces Agent to find uh, your your Elf Warrior, so you could play basically have eight copies that you could find in the deck. Um, so that kind of makes things a little bit easier to find that one, and it plays well with the strongest card of the uh, strongest of the green cards. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to try to make all of those decks and and kind of come up with some examples because I think that's kind of the more interesting space. Um, I showed the blue decks where it was kind of obvious what uh, the island cycling card is going to go to, uh, Lorien's Reveal. Um, but these these kind of create kind of a new deck that we don't we haven't really seen before, and so it could be a little bit interesting to see this. Um, so that's green. Uh, come back for colorless and lands review. See you there.